Hi, it's Dr. Chris Googles here from Square One, and today I'm going to talk about one of the most common, but also one of the most overlooked reasons for low back pain. Now, first of all, 80% of Americans experience back pain at some point in their life. Low back pain is the second most common cause for missed work days. It's only secondary to respiratory tract, tract infections, and it's also the number one cause of disability. So we know it affects a lot of different people. Now there's many potential different causes of low back pain. Some of the most common causes of low back pain are disc herniations or disc bulge, arthritic changes, um, scoliosis, or a loss of the normal lumbar curve. Those are a few of the most common causes. But one that's frequently overlooked and that we're going to talk about today is when someone has an anatomical leg length discrepancy. What that means is one of their legs is not as long or as shorter than the other side. Now, a lot of providers are aware of this problem and we see a big difference, like 20 or 30 millimeters or more. But a lot of people have small leg length discrepancies. In this paper I'm going to talk about today, the authors actually state that 96% of the adult population has a leg length discrepancy. That pretty much means almost everyone has one leg that is shorter than the others to some degree. The other thing these authors mention is that people that have a leg length discrepancy have much higher rates of pain or are much more likely to have chronic low back pain than someone that doesn't. They also mention that the majority of people that have a disc herniation in their lower back, like L5, S1, the majority of those people have a leg length discrepancy. So we know it causes lots of problems. Now this is why it's important, here's some of the mechanics of the problems that it causes. When you have one leg shorter than the other, it actually causes a shifting of the spine. Now keep in mind there's always forces being that come down. And normally your spine, those forces are designed to be balanced and spread out through the different joints, muscles, ligaments, and tendons. When you have a leg length discrepancy and it causes the pelvis to tilt, it causes compression much higher in some areas than, than the others. It can cause facet joints to break down and get arthritic changes. It can cause disc bulging. It can cause disc to degenerate. Um, lots of different things. It causes muscles and ligaments to have to um, to adapt to that. So you'll have compensatory mechanisms where some of the muscles and ligaments are in much higher stress and strain than other joints. So there's a lot of physical mechanical problems that this can lead to. What's interesting in this paper. The authors looked at 33 people that had a leg length discrepancy. And what they did is they took 22 of those people and they gave them a shoe insert or a lift to compensate for that leg length to balance out their legs and to balance out their sacrum and pelvis. And what's interesting with this paper is the authors used a full length lift compared to a heel lift. So what a lot of people will do is they use the, a lift like this that just goes under the heel for someone that has a short leg. The problem with this, it's almost like when you're using something like this, it's almost like you're standing on your tippy toes on that side. It can cause a lot of Achilles tendon problems, knee problems, SI, SI joint problems, all the way on up. What these authors did is the same thing that we use in our office, and they use a full length lift. So this one that we use, it's made by a company called Mojo Feet out of Denver, Colorado. And when we get a patient that has a short leg, we'll actually measure how short that is, and probably more important than getting the legs perfect, we wanna actually balance the sacrum. So this is the example of a patient that came in to see us. See us. This is a teenage boy. His mom brought him in because he's having chronic low back pain. And when we did his exam, we did an x-ray, and we noticed that he had one leg shorter than the other by about six millimeters. So what we did for him is we ordered a lift for him that was designed to fit in his shoes, and we got him the exact height that it would take to balance his femur heads, and probably more importantly, to balance his sacrum. And this boy, that's literally all we had to do is to treat his low back pain. In this x-ray, this is the person that came in just last week, and it's a bigger difference, and you can see it's actually about 20 millimeters. And you can see that that is actually causing a secondary scoliosis. Now, but that's a bit, a bit larger. So a quick recap. We know the vast majority of people out there have a leg length discrepancy. We know that if you have one leg shorter than the other, you are much more likely to have low back pain. Also, the majority of people that have um, a disc herniation also have a leg length discrepancy, and they usually get pain on the side of the short leg. Some of the other 
things these authors mentioned is that when you have nine millimeters or less in length of discrepancy, that can lead to facet joint changes and early arthritis in the facet joints. At six millimeters or less, it can cause pelvic obliquity or tilting and secondary scoliosis. And at just three millimeters or less, that can cause and induce postural changes. Some of the main problems we mentioned is secondary scoliosis. We mentioned that sacred iliac joint problems. We mentioned accelerated degeneration in disc and also arthritic changes in the facet joints. And then also um, we mentioned how this can be one of the things that can perpetuate scoliosis. So the last thing I want to show you is a very extreme case. And this is a patient that came in to see me with very severe adult de novo or degenerated scoliosis. This was actually a person that reached surgical levels. He had severe instability. But I want to point out how you can see how he has a leg length discrepancy that causes pelvis to tilt that also contributes to his scoliosis. And that's even one of the things we will look for in people that have scoliosis in adulthood that increase their likelihood for a curve to progress. So if you're out there and you're dealing with low back pain, this is definitely one of the things you should be checking for because sometimes it's a simple solution to giving you a simple cheap insert to balance out that pelvis to help resolve your low back pain. If you're a physician, or doctor out there watching this and you have patients with back pain, this is one of the things you should always rule out because it's the solution can be very simple. And a lot of times this is done in conjunction with other rehab methods to correct those problems. So I'm Dr. Chris Goobles here from Square One. If you have back pain or know someone that has, get them in here so we can check if this could be a simple fix to their problem.